Hey everyone, the focus this week on my project Porsche 911 is going to be on the bodywork. I know I have put this off for several weeks going through some chassis modifications and other fun stuff, but now it's time to get sandy and get dusty and do some bodywork. Garage time. Okay, now the manufacturer of this particular epoxy recommends sanding it before applying filler if it's been more than seven days. And you guys know it's been more than seven days since I shot the epoxy primer on this. So this is practically fully cured and it needs some mechanical tooth to, um, for the filler to bite into it. Now I don't want to sand too much because I want the protection of the epoxy primer on the bare metal. So all I'm trying to do is take the gloss off this with some 180 grit and then I'm gonna be skimming this thing with filler. I've already started a little bit of scuffing um, just to, just to kind of see what it was like, how it sanded, but I need to get all the gloss off and then I'm gonna mix up some filler and start coating it up. So now I'm ready to start block sanding across this gap. And to do that, it's important that the door is in its position that it's going to be for the rest of its life. Here's a cool uh, homemade tool. Anybody, anybody want to guess what this is for? Okay, I've got the door striker installed and adjusted, so now I can actually close the door. And it stays where it should, so it's adjusted. So now I have the gaps back to what I worked so hard to get at previously. So one of the important things to note is these hinges have to be um, tight. So I have already gone through and replaced the bushings in the hinges. So this door doesn't have any play um, up or down or twist or anything. There's no play in the hinge pins. And that's really important when trying to do the body work is that the door is not going to move. It's going to stay where the hinges tell it to stay and the latches tell it to stay. Also, um, the rubber is intact. So this is the factory rubber. I'm not sure I'm going to replace it, but I most likely will. Obviously got some paint on this part here, but the rubber's in place and this is still soft and supple. So it is providing some pressure against the door latches as the door closes. That's important. The other thing that's important is the um, elevation of the door gap. Not only the door gap in this direction, but the elevation from here. So remember, this is just bare metal with epoxy primer on top. So I've, I've selected the kind of the best average fit all the way around the door. And it does start to deviate right about here. There is a little gap there. So, so what happens is right now the, the body is sort of caving in a little bit as it approaches this door. So that's what the filler is for. And I'm going to be building up some, some filler on this side. Now, the factory primer and filler was already removed. So this is not the stock door. And this is what happens when you're just trying to put parts together on a Frankenstein car. But I'm not worried about building this up a little bit with filler. And I'm going to be block sanding across the gap to get a nice smooth transition from door to fender. I've already begun kind of scuffing up this surface for the filler to go on top. Still have more to do, just taking the shine off of that. For these concave areas, I have a cylindrical block that I'm um, using to get in those 
rounded areas. And hopefully you can kind of see the difference between the glossy there on the door and then the sanded here on the, uh, the quarter panel. And I um, try not to go too far. You can see some of the, the, the lumpy uh, weld areas developing. Um, and I didn't try to straighten anything. I'm just trying to scratch the surface without removing too much primer. There's the door glossy. This uh, lighter gray is the, is the sanded with... Uh, this is with 180 grit. So I'm gonna spread filler over this entire panel um, as a skim coat. And like I showed earlier with my ruler, I don't expect that it's gonna need a lot of filler, but there you know, obviously is some, some waves in this. And any waves in this panel, also any sort of irregularities with how the quarter panel matches the door is gonna get resolved using filler. Okay, I just got done uh, cleaning up my, my spreaders. You saw me mixing the, uh, the Bondo. It's actually called Rage Ultra. And uh, I mixed it on aluminum, kind of a small piece, probably should get a bigger one. Um, I tried to mix it as best I could, and then I applied it to the car. Um, I tried to work it into the scratches I put in the epoxy the best I could. So I was putting a lot of force on there, trying to spread it trying to make sure it has good adhesion to the car. You're probably wondering, you know, why am I just covering the car in what a lot of people call Bondo? So plastic filler is kind of got a bad rap. Um, I'm going to use it to, this is called a skim coat. Um, and it's basically skim coat the entire car. And, and the reason why um, I'm doing that is because I want it to be as straight as possible, <clears throat> kind of for the lowest possible cost. Now, I did do everything I could to get the metal as straight as possible and the gaps in the door fits and all that as straight as possible. And I do think it is straight, but the process of making it straight with good reflections all the way down the side does require additional work. Now, there's some people that say, I don't use Bondo and, and they probably don't, but there's sprayable you know, polyester primers polyester fillers that you kind of spray on, sort of does the same thing as this, 
and it effectively builds up the surface to where you can create a flat, good reflection kind of paint job. Now, you know this is a budget build, and I'm going the old school method, which is spreading this polyester filler on the car, you know, with the spreader, sanding it back, and most of this is gonna end up on the floor. It's only gonna stay in the low spots and the high spots will reveal themselves when I do the block sanding. Now, I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm sharing with you this what is what a lot of people won't share with you, the whole skim coat the entire car with filler. I'm gonna finish letting this cure. It takes about 20 minutes before I can just knock the big um, mistakes off. And then I'll come back tomorrow morning and do some 80 grit sanding and now I'm trying to, like I said, not just get rid of these um, weld marks, but create a smooth car that is gonna look good when painted. Okay, here it is up close. And, and you, you can see that I, I got some, some scraper lines in it. Uh, a lot of that's unavoidable, but I didn't do a super great job spreading it out. And um, I think I'll get better with this as I have more time and practice. But, this is basically just globbing it on and uh, sanding it off. So these heavy lines, kind of reflecting in the camera there, um, this will, these lines right here will, will, will be able to knock down real quick with a, I'll probably hit it with a 36 grit just to get these real heavy lines down and then go further with 80 grit. Now I put this tape on here to try to preserve this arch that I worked so hard on for the RS kind of flare. And that's just, I don't want to, do too much. So I want to sort of get this surface sanded and then I'll come back and I'll do more on this surface to make sure I can preserve the shape of the car and not just get a little out of control. Also more tape up here just to prevent it from getting into these difficult to sand areas. Right here in this area the tape there will help me you know make a clean edge on that. So that's uh, that's what I'm after. So you guys can call this a Bondo bucket if you want to. I have no shame in, in this method. It's uh, best I can do. And if, it, if it's a Bondo bucket, so be it. Um, you'll see here in a minute, almost all this is gonna come off to where it's really just an eggshell thickness. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes since uh, I applied the, the filler. And uh, I'm gonna just knock it down real quick with some 36 grit. This is pretty aggressive, so I only want to hit the really tall spots. And this is a, a Dura-Block. It's, it's a curved surface um, because this is largely curved. It does have a flat side too, which I could put some more paper on the back and do that. But I'm just gonna, you know, real quickly knock this down and uh, go from there. Many of you were concerned about the test stands integrity and thought that there should be some bracing and stuff. And I, and I totally agree. I said so in the last video, but here's what I'm doing to increase the uh, strength of the base plate. And I'm also putting some straps along the back to triangulate the sort of structure so it doesn't just flop over, which I didn't think was likely to begin with, but you can never be too safe when it comes to, uh, to jack stands and uh, this is an especially tall jack stand so i'm putting in some more safety right now
Okay, now the most vulnerable position of this tire stand is when it's all the way up. So as you can see, I've added some um, almost two inch flanges to the base plate. That goes around the back side. Um, the front is still left alone, so the jack can slide in without having to roll over anything. Um, and this carries around through the sides. So this does provide some strength to the base and also keeps the base plate um, flexing when it's going up with the jack. These uh, straps really triangulate this box structure. So if there's a force on the tire going this way, um, that means that that's going to put this bar or, or strap here in tension. It doesn't want to go this way because that's going to try to make this longer. So get, making that strap there, tying it in to the corner of the base plate is going to prevent this from kind of the leaning tower of Pisa this way. And then this strap prevents it from going this way. So using these in tension is, is why there's two. One is to prevent it from going this way. The other one's to prevent it from going this way. And of course, all four tires will have this same structure. Um, these straps can be removed when it's time to lower it. So I welded on these, these studs here. So you just take the, uh, the nuts off. This will be a little difficult when it's underneath the uh, car. These can flex forward. This can flex down and then can lower it down as original base plate is stronger than it used to be. So I'm not concerned about this failing anymore. I'm gonna weigh this. I think it's about 40 pounds of steel. It's gotta be good enough. Um, I am going to add another piece of chalk in here just to prevent the tire from rolling. And one of you, I think it was Dave had said to ratchet tie the tire to the stand. And I think that's a great idea. So I'll be doing that too on all four tires. So. I have yet to go underneath the car when it's on these stands, and I'm still going to use a redundant stop in case, you know, there's an earthquake, whatever might happen. I don't want to be a victim of a car landing on me. So I will put another redundant pair of jack stands or something even taller than a jack stand to prevent this thing from falling. So, you know, I appreciate all your concerns. I hope this uh, makes the internet happier got a lot of feedback on this design. Some of it wasn't so great. So let me know what you think about this one. I do think it's going to do the trick, but uh, of course you guys can be the judge. Okay. Now I've already taken a lot of the filler off and you can see that most of those application lines are sort of gone. There, there's still some, here's, here's a big one right here. Um, and I'm going to just hit that to, with the 80 grit. So the next stage will be 80 grit, and I'm just gonna keep blocking until I, uh, A, get it straight, and B, it starts to break through to the primer or to the metal. I am gonna be putting more epoxy primer over the top of the filler, so I don't really wanna get down to the metal, but if I do, it's okay, because I can always put, put more epoxy primer down. So that was step, um, step one. I'm gonna let it cure for a little bit more time, and then hit it with the 80 grit. Okay, I've switched to a little bit more flexible block because I want to make sure I can follow the curvature. This is 80 grit. Okay, I've just gone as far as I'm going to go with the 80 grit and the majority of this filler has come off but I'm going to show you up close what I'm left with and some areas that I could have done better on. What we're looking at is kind of a camouflage pattern of what the highs and the lows are. So this all smoothed out really nice. 
Um, the gray is the original epoxy primer, and then the, uh, the lighter kind of gray is the, the filler. So if you can read this carefully, you can see that this, this spot here was a little bit high, this spot here was a little bit low, and then right here you can barely see, but this is a tiny bit of metal poking through. So as soon as I get to um, the epoxy primer or the metal, then I stop. Now I can tell that all the 36 grit scratches are gone. These are all 80 grit scratches. So I was able to sand across here and get it to a level position where I, I feel like it's starting to, to smooth out. Okay, this is, the, uh, this is the lower rear fender area and this is the weld seam right along here. This is an area that I'm gonna need to go back and add a little bit more filler. I sanded through right here to the metal. This is right as the weld comes around the corner. And I'm not sure if you can see this on camera. Let me try to adjust this a little bit. Okay, there's a spot right about here that is not showing the 80 grit scratches. So I, I went to metal here and then it's, it's still low in this little tiny section. Um, everywhere else I can see my 80 grit scratches. Here's this, um, body line at the top. I was able to keep this preserved. I took the tape off, a little bit of metal coming through right there. And then right up here, sand it all the way up to this drip rail. All right, so this is a new chapter on this project and uh, it's pretty exciting to do something a little different. Uh, the nice thing about this body work is it's, it's much quieter. So I'm able to work, you know, into the late hours. Uh, I was doing this up to about 1230 last night because uh, it's nice and quiet and uh, easy to do. Um, there's a lot more of this to do. Obviously, I'm going to be going around the whole car doing this, and some of it's not going to look too exciting because it's going to be repetitive. So I'm going to probably bounce around, skip ahead a little bit as I'm doing more of the uh, chassis modifications to this car. So don't forget to leave a comment below. Uh, this project is all about a community and helping each other out. Um, you know, I'm a doer and I'm, I'm working on this the best I can, and I hope it inspires you to get out and build your dream car. Uh, but if you have some good ideas, especially when it comes to body work, uh, please leave a comment below. I love uh, hearing from you guys. I know that there's some experts that are, that are on this community, and I really appreciate that. So stay tuned next week. I'm gonna keep doing chassis modifications and also some filling and sanding as we just get all the way around. So thanks again, see you next week.